Third John, are you there? The elder John was writing a very interesting thing to a man named Gaius. But years ago, I figured out that if God was only talking to one person, then why do we have the Bible? Someone lift your hand and say, the word of God is for me. <laughs> and say, my name is not Gaius. Is it? Is your name Gaius? Uh, I, I finally met someone named Gaius in Nigeria. And I think his mother or dad liked the verse so much, they thought, I'm going to name my child Gaius. So finally I met a Gaius in my travels and journeys all over the world. Finally met one. Because I used to say, I never seen a Gaius anywhere except in New York when you say, hey, use guys, you know, like the Brooklyn, hey, Tony, what are you talking about? Hey, use guys, what do you, what's the matter with you, you know, the Italian and Italians in New York? I thought, there's a guy that's right there. All the guys, the guy is, right? Hello. Well, finally I met one, but I found out that it's definitely not for one person. Put your hand on the verse, or if you got your phone, or you just know it in your memory, put, hit yourself in the head and say, um, this is for me. Come on, claim it right now. He said what? What is your name? Peter, James, John, Martha, Mary, and who else? Let me just use some Bible names so I don't get all into all your names. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Amen. Beloved, that's God talking to you and talking to me. And he said what? I wish, pray, and desire, depending on which version of the Bible you're reading. King James says wish. New King James said, I pray. And... NIV, New International Version, <laughs> said, I desire. Remember the Lord said he'll give us the desires of his heart, of our heart. Yeah, I like the way I said it, really. It's, that was a good slip there. Not a, it was right. His desires in our hearts. Lift your hands. You have no idea. Let's lift our hands to the Lord and just claim this. You have no idea. How much God has prepared. No idea. I found it in the scripture again last week when I was in Uganda preaching. And the Lord said to me, look at this. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard. You know the verse. Nor said unto the heart of man the great things that God has prepared for those who, of us who love him. That God has already, What? Prepared when? 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 You don't know. Some of you looking at me like, well, come on, it's an open book test. Come on, we have the word. We can read the verse. It's an open book test. Come on, multiple choice. Look, if you're not having a good time, I'm praying for you to get delivered. Lift your hands, praise the Lord. I'm enjoying myself already. I, this verse alone can wreck your, completely wreck your world. Some people sitting here looking all sad with their arms twisted up and folded. Well, okay, okay, I, ho I hope you get help. I hope you get, uh, you know, money comes from God. Amen. Don't look at all sad. We're supposed to come to the house looking happy. Praise the Lord. At least fake it till you make it. If you're not happy, act happy. If, you don't, if, if, you, if you're not enjoying, you know, the, the afternoon, then, you know, go drink a cup of coffee and wake up. You know, do something. Praise the Lord. You know what I mean? Or we'll order some cappuccino in. I'd like to have a cappuccino machine right here. That would be great. Imagine in the church we have a cappuccino maker. Woo, you hear that thing? We'd have to stop it during the message, though. Like, psh, you know that noise it makes? When you grind in the coffee and psh, you know, you can't do that during the, during the, during the, the teaching time. Or the music, you can maybe get away with it because the music is loud, you know. You. Anyway. <laughs> He's already prepared, not he's going to prepare. 
One thing about God, and I want to kill this, I want to kill this sacred cow about timing again. I want to hit it right now real quick, just for, just for a second, because I've, I've preached on this a bit, and maybe, maybe some of you have heard me say this before. Uh, many haven't, but the timing thing. Isaiah 60, 22 says, A little one will become like a thousand, a small one like a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. I've seen people, in other words, not my time, the Lord says, not your time. When you're ready, I was already ready. And I've seen some people say things like, you know, just relax. You know, God has a time. Oh, come on. You got to be kidding me. I heard a man of God, a dear friend of mine, who's going through a little trial right now. But it's not a small one. It's kind of a big one, actually. One of the major, major leaders in our generation. He's having a, you know... Bit of a, he's been having a bit of a, an interesting season, to say the least. And he said, don't ever say to me, it's going to be all right. Lift your hands. You know that Christian expression we use, it's going to be all right? He said, don't ever say that to me. He said, I can cancel a relationship and a friendship over that. How dare you say that to me? Would you think I don't know that? I've been walking with God my whole life. You think I don't know that? No, we need ingredients in the in the day on how to, you know, get on with the program that he has. Say something that's going to encourage me, that's going to lift me up, that's going to give me some insight, some wisdom, some information, something I can work with and use for the betterment of my life and then for the world I'm living in, in right? So, th so let's get rid of these Christian slang, you know, Christianese, you know. Yeah, it's going to be all right. Yeah, praise the Lord. You know, like people say, God is good, right? All the time. God is good all the time. God is good. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And I, I asked somebody once years ago, I, I said, uh, yeah, but are you good? How's your life? If he's so good, how's your life? Do you, are you connected with him? Are you and him connected? Can I tell you the, uh, the connection? Like you're plugged into the currency of heaven. You know, like the the main circuitry of the glory of God. If you get there, hey, all these things come down into your life. Let's pray over that. All of these things begin to come. Woo! And you can't stay the same even for another hour, never mind another day. You cannot stay the same. You cannot remain the same when God touches you. Either you're going to get healed, you're going to get encouraged, you're going to get happy, you're going to get blessed, you're going to get some open doors, you're going to get some favor. Something phenomenal is going to happen when you connect with him. And the sad thing is, is that we have a whole enterprise in the world called the church, you know, if I can call it a conglomerate, you know, multinational corporation, you know, called the church. I was dealing with this a bit last week, and I don't know if people were too ready for it, but, but I said this. Is the Christian Culture Club really the kingdom of God? Is the CCC the KOG? Remember that? How many remember that? That was, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was an amazing revelation. It just came out by the Holy Ghost. How many, you know, know that the church club is not always the kingdom of God? But if you're in the kingdom of God, whoo, Lord, something's going to happen. Something is going to happen for you. Is that what you want? Can we lift our hands to the boss? Is that what you want? You want him to do something for you. But we have to get in the right way of the, the connection process. Or else, how on earth is this going to happen? You know, the church is really not supposed to be a group of lazy people. Not supposed to be a group of people that are wondering all the time if they're going to get a miracle or not. You could schedule your own miracles. I wanted to play something by uh, a dear mentor, uh, evangelist, Reinhard Bonnke, who's gone on to his bliss of reward in heaven now. And I had a dream, a prophetic dream, some weeks before he died. Uh, few, I think it was about three months, actually. And he was just on the edge of, the edge of you know, heading over into eternity. And I had a dream of he was crossing over. And I saw it in a, in, in a dream. And I explained that, I've explained that before, but one thing he said, he asked this theologian uh, 
When are we going to see miracles in the move of God? When are we going to preach the gospel? When are we going to see crowds come to Christ Jesus? When are we going to see the, the, what Jesus you know, died for and gave us? When are we going to see it happen? Why don't I see it happening? He was very disturbed as a young man. And the theologian says, well, we just have to wait on God, you know. He said, what? We have to wait on God. We have to wait till revival comes. He thought, revival? He started screaming. He nearly went crazy, you know. You know, Germans can have hot blood. So can Americans. Praise the Lord. We have hot, especially people from New York like me. We are hot-blooded people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm a technological prophet. I, wa I, I wanted to say that. Some people need to know that. I, I received this prophecy. The Lord reminded me of it yesterday. He said, remember that word that I had this prophet speak to you years ago? You're a technological prophet. Technological. I thought, that's deep, you know. Meaning everything has to be great. Technology is great. Everything has to work right. You know what I mean? So I'm glad. I'm glad to say that. I'm glad the Lord reminded me about that. And I, mean, I really feel an intensity about everything being done in excellence. Not because it's a style, but because that's how it should be done to glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So he said, no, we can't. That's like an Old Testament kind of mentality. Maybe we have to wait for a certain time. But he said, but Jesus came and said, it is finished. In other words, all things are ready now. Yes? So let's go. And the man looked at him like, hmm, we'll see. So Reinhardt had his first, uh, 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 he had a big evangelistic crusade. There was a guy that was used in miracles, a, a powerful man of God. And uh, he came, and, and after the first day, he, he saw him later, and he, the man was dressed casual, and his, he had his luggage cases out somewhere. Interesting. Hey, so we're going to be going to the meeting in a while. And the man said, <clears throat> I want to tell you something, son. I'm not coming. I thought, oh, this is great. Hallelujah. What a, just, well, what a time. You know, we've advertised this. We've, we've, we've told people, and then you're not coming. What do you mean you're not coming? He said, I'm leaving. I'm leaving now. I'm on my way. Sorry. And he took off. So there's the young evangelist thinking, what am I going to do now? It's like the meeting. There are people coming to the meeting. So the Lord spoke to him and said, but I've also anointed you. I've also put my hand upon you. So that was Reinhardt's little test there to say, well, now we got to get this program on the road. And that birthed this whole ministry. Lift your hands. God will use anything to get you. You know, things will shift and shape in this way and that way and th to get you into the place where he's ordained you to flow. And you and him are enough. But you have to know that. He already knows that, but you have to know that. <laughs> so, so the Lord is ready. Are, 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 you, are, you, are you amazed at this? He's ready. He's ready. I said he's ready. Amen. Third John 2, let me read it. Beloved, say your name. Say my name. Say my name. My name is Thomas. Thomas, you say, Thomas. Thomas. Hallelujah. That's me. And there were four of us, right? So I'm the fourth. Let's see if there's five and six coming down the pipeline. I don't know. Maybe one day. Who knows? But, uh, beloved Thomas. Beloved, say your name. Come on, you got to claim it now. You want to be blessed, right? Some, some people are missing out on something today, and I hope they can catch it however way, but for our partners and friends and members and congregants and people and friends and associates and beloved ones that are connected with us, the Lord spoke to me last night. Lift your hands. He spoke to me last night. He said, pronounce that those connected with you, connected with you the right way, the right way and the right thing, are going to be made rich. Very rich people. And I'm not insecure about people where they're at. If people just came and sat here, 
or connecting and listen but just, just for that purpose alone. You don't care about us. You don't care about anything. But really, really, it doesn't work that way. The Lord spoke to me today now, something else. He said, tell the people this also. When all of the people that you see that have gotten blessed through the connection with you, John said it in the beginning, so the pipeline was already opened from heaven. Beloved, you, I, wish, pray, and desire that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I want you to prosper. In other words, I want you to be rich. Lift your hands. I want you to be healed and healthy. I want you to be, I want you to be absolutely strong, full of might and strength. I want your mind to be at peace. I want your, your emotional well-being to be intact. I want you to be so blessed. And I also want you to have revelation and illumination and enlightenment that when, you know, uh, uh, your mind is working right, then all the systems in your body can work right. All the systems in your life can work right. And when you're connected very strongly with God, you can see his blessings coming to you. And all kinds of empowerment, breakthrough, miracles, just... It's just endless, Amen. and it's infinite, and it's not limited. Basically, what limits things is our, is our faith level, our connection level. So the Lord said to me, he said, tell the people this. I'm going to tell you right now. He said, the people that you've seen get blessed, what did they do? I thought, oh, they helped a lot. They were there. They were loyal. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were loyal. They were faithful. They were courageous. They were sacrificial. They worked. They persevered. They sowed. They served. They connected. They did a lot. And then God gave them a lot. And then I look at people that really don't do anything. Now, I'm, not, I'm, I'm trying to be uh, very, you know, neutral here. Objective, not subjective, although the message is also very subjective because... To those that are subjected to the will of God and working the things the way he's ordained, they're the ones that get the, get the promise. They're the ones that get touched. And the Lord told me to say that very clear. So, so although I'd say, like, if someone wanted to sit in the place and sit with us and just listen and say, you know, be like a sponge taking the water. I don't want to know anybody. I don't want to do anything. I just want to sit here. I said it last week. I said that part of the Christian church if you just want to be involved and you come for whatever you've come for, that's okay. And with me, it really, I really think so. I really think it's okay. But I have to, I have to tell the whole story about it because you, you want to get blessed. You have to do something. The Bible says the diligent hand makes rich, but the slack hand makes to want. I cannot refute that or change that to accommodate anybody. To try to be a nice pastor and say, well, it doesn't matter what you do. You're going to get blessed anyway. Whoa, can I, can I say that according to the Bible? Not really. Remember in the book of Acts when they had all things in common. They, they, people were selling properties and bringing the proceeds and laying it there. These are the ones that walked with Jesus for three and a half years. They were there day and night without sleep. They were praying. They were dealing with warfare. And then they... The, the, these evil people took their master and crucified him. And they stood there and watched all that. Did they, like, do nothing with their life? And all of a sudden, one day, they're anointed with power and they're so blessed? No. When Paul said, you know, when Jesus, when the scripture said, freely, you know, freely you receive, freely give, that's a thing that just frees you up to operate in that. When Paul said, it's not by works, lest any man should boast. He, in other words, he was just saying that you can't earn, you know, automatically by your own will, the blessing of God, unless you do something according to his plan. I, I look into the scripture a little bit deeply. I don't want to just see it for what it says on the surface. I, I, I want to I understand what it really means. You know? Success is not by accident. The only place success, and we've been talking about success, the Lord said, this is the season of success. How many are putting success into your name? How many believe in God that success is your portion? Oh, yes, yes, everybody's putting their hands up. Success. The only place success comes before work is in the dictionary, S before W. 
Even in my book that I go, I have topical books that I've written here and others that I have on the desk too right now. I want to reference a couple things. The, uh, you know, S comes before W. Oh, yeah. In the, in, in the print realm of A to Z, but not in reality in life. So I see people that got touched and blessed. Did they do nothing? No, they did something. So really, when you give your all, the Lord will reward you for that. I have to tell it right. According to scripture, God didn't promise anything to a lazy person. God didn't promise anything at all but, but trouble to a rebel. Hello? God said if you uh, are a rebel, you're like a witch, you know. You're trying to conjure up things for yourself in an illegal manner. Remember Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, right? Right? So he says, if anybody comes up another way, they're a thief and a robber, right? Another witness, remember Genesis 11, the Tower of Babel, Nimrod, the mighty hunter, the warrior man. He said, well, we're going to make uh, our own way. Hmm? <laughs> and the Lord said, oh, no, you're not, and confounded their languages and just put them, put them on a path of, you know, derision and confusion, and they all began to speak different things. So they couldn't understand each other. So God does not, and guess what, they, you know, and you know this, I hope you know this, there's no other name but by the name of Jesus whereby men can be saved. Is that right? There's no other name under heaven whereby men can be saved. I saw this thing on the, on the Facebook, I was really laughing. Oh, some things are just funny. The American news media is really funny right now. If you really want to laugh, just watch like Greg Gutfeld and all these crazy newscasters that just mock the, the liberal left, you know. <laughs> You'll laugh your head off. And see some things that the traders did in our country, some of the political leaders that have gone before the current one, did some bad things. And when those start to get exposed and come out and this demented lady, the pathetic woman, that's trying to come against our president. Praise the Lord. She's going to be out of a job soon. I prophesy. Amen. She won't stand in the next day. God's going to take her out of there. We found out that her liquor bill on airlines is in the six figures, in dollars. $100,000 drinking alcohol on the flights paid for by the American people. That's the lady. So she, she talks like, rrr, rrr, you look at her. You kind of wonder what she's saying, uh-huh. There could, could be a reason for that. Praise the Lord. But I watched all this stuff, I was laughing, but I saw something. I saw something really amazing. They, they were talking about this, you know, Feng shu, Fen Shuang, you know? Feng Shuang, whatever. It's like this Chinese kind of thing, meaning the balance of energy. Meaning if everything's, you know, come see, come saw, if everything's okay in the atmosphere. So I... I kind of get tickled by the words, so I just laugh, you know, because I heard some comedian one time say, their feng shuang was all messed up. <laughs> their feng shuang, feng shuang was all messed up. I was laughing. I thought, yeah, I get it. A lot of people like that, what they call this thing. But that's another thing. And then I, I tried to look at it more, and it got all into this Buddhist thing and this <coughs> fake spiritual stuff. I said, nah, this is rubbish. Lift your hands. Only Jesus is the Lord. Come on now. Only Jesus Christ. He's the only way. He's the only truth. He's the only life. And he said nobody can come up here except they come through him. But the glory that Jesus gave us, did it come for nothing? Oh, God, it cost them everything. He felt like God forsook him, and God did for a minute, a few minutes, a couple of hours, a few hours. And he went through that horrible situation. It cost Jesus' life to give us what we have. So why do we count as such a cheap thing to give ourselves, to give our money, to give our service, to give our sacrifice, to give our diligence? All the stress that comes in life, deal, dealing with all kinds of issues and things. I mean, is, is it worthwhile? Don't you think the king of kings is worthy of your service? I just want to worship him for a minute right now myself. Lord, we're here. We're yours. We are yours. 
We are yours. Anything you deem necessary of us, let us give it to you. All right, just pray in the spirit. No music. Let me just pray in the spirit. Just speak in the Holy Ghost right now for a minute. I'm praying that God would begin to visit people like he's visited me. The way he talks to me. You know, it's amazing. Like a man speaks to his friend face to face. I I'm amazed at how God speaks to me. He'll tell me something about this and about something about that and something about that and something about someone and something about a situation and tell me what to say and I see it and I hear it and I, I, I even had a, a, a prophetic dream this week about, about President Trump. I'm going to share that in a couple of minutes. I wanted to play the, uh, I wanted to play the, uh, the clips from Dr. Mike Murdoch, but we'll do that in another, in another, in another service. For the technical thing, we have to set something up for that. But I want, I want it to really look right and look well. So you'll get to see that. Don't worry. That's coming. And we're going to be doing some worship songs, worship music, great songs. I'm going to be singing. I'm going to be doing all this. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very excited about it. But the Lord began to speak to me about this thing of excellence, this thing about perseverance. You know, the diligent, I want to say it again, two scriptures, the diligent hand makes rich. And also Proverbs 22, 29 says, See a person diligent. They will stand before great people. Not before just unknown common people. They'll stand before great ones. But you have to first be diligent. And that is a master key to success. Keep praying. The Lord wants to give it to you. He doesn't want you to remain in obscurity. By the way, the time clock is ticking. Tick tock, tick tock, said the clock. Tick tock, tick tock, said the clock. It keeps ticking. We only have one life to live. We only have one round to go. We only have one, you know, shot at this life that we're living. This only one that we have. We don't have two or three. You only live twice. That was a James Bond movie. That's not reality. <laughs> I remember the song, you only live twice. Da, 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 da. Nice song, but not, not true. It's the point that man wants to die and then the judgment. We have, to, we have to give our time right now. And that's also the case with your dreams, things that you want. You have to hurry up and get on the program of getting them. It's not like you have all day. I'm reminded of a scene in a movie when this guy says, oh, Come on, hurry up, I don't have all day. And then he laughed and said, ha, 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 yes I do. I actually have all the time in the world. And that was his last hour in the movie. I won't tell the script of it. But that, that was the end of his, uh, the way the movie went. What a phenomenal movie. If you ever get to see that, it's called The Count of Monte Cristo. It's a very clean movie. There's no blood and guts and gore and horror and bad language. None of that, none of that, nothing at all. It's a very clean movie. You can watch it as a believer. But what a story about uh, betrayal and then the victory that came later. We see that also in the Bible with Job. We see it with Joseph. We see it with anybody that was, that was great. David had a lot of trials, but he was still blessed. And look what his son Solomon did. Look what became of him. And God said, even Jesus will be in your lineage. So he's in the royal. He's one of the 24 elders right now in heaven. He's been there for the last... 2,000 years after Jesus said it's finished, he went back up. So where was David before that when he died? He was in Abraham's bosom. There was this place. The Catholics try to make it like purgatory, but there's no purgatory anymore. Jesus said it is finished. That means it's it. Like So it's down or up. You know, once you leave the body, you're going to the place right away. There's no holding place. But the, before, before Christ came, there was a place called Abraham's bosom. So anybody that was righteous that died was there. Their spirit was there, and then when Jesus came, he said he led captivity captive, right? And he led everybody out that was supposed to come out, and they all went, and it was finished right there. But, you know, you think of the glory of that, to birth the kingdom of God in eternity for all of us. But what did it cost him? So much. So much. Even his life. Are you willing to give yourself like that? To say, Lord, whatever you want, whatever you want of me? I'll tell you, it's the greatest way to get blessed. You know, people say they want to be blessed. Well, you have to do something to get something. Somewhere in the equation is action. No action, 
no corresponding result. That's how it works. Close your eyes and let's pray for a minute. I feel like I, I want this to go in you. I want you to catch this. Because when God approves of you and how you're like, you know, carrying on in life, how you're walking with him, there's nothing he won't do for you. There's no bill of yours or expense of yours he won't pay. Oh, no. There's no blessing that he'll withhold from you. Deuteronomy 29.9 says, as you're praying, we're praying, I'm praying with you. Keep, therefore, the words of the covenant and do them. Oh, my, this is proving what I just said by the Holy Ghost. I've just looked down in this book here, and I'm finding the in Deuteronomy 29.9. You can make a note of that and meditate on it. Keep, therefore, the words of this covenant, of the covenant, this covenant, and do them, do them. Don't just know about them or think that they're out there somewhere, but you actually do them, that you may prosper in all that you do. Deuteronomy 29.9, it's a master key to success. Success is joy, you know, uh, manifested when a goal has been achieved, when you've actually had a result of something. I'm thinking about people that have gotten blessed. I have two people in America right now that I'm working on very hard, several actually, but two in particular. And they're going to be millionaires under our watch. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some things have fallen into their hands since they were good to me and kind to me and honorable to me that was sacrificial for them. One majorly so, one in a somewhat of a degree, but both of them, I see the hand of God opening new things for them. And I'm writing them messages. You're going to be like bazunga rich. You know, it's a word I made up, meaning a lot. I don't know. I just thought of it. Bazunga, B-A-Z-O-O-O-N-G-A. -O 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 I just made up a new word. Praise the Lord. Meaning like <laughs> fabulously rich. And they, one, the person wrote back, yes, amen, I'm going to be bazunga rich. They wrote back. And they copied it just the way I said it. Just something, a word I made up. But, but, but who, who are they? Who are they? They're people that have done a lot. And I felt that the, the, the anointing manifested and came out and shut out from me, like from my, from my, off my being, off my physical body. Woo, and hit them. Bang! I was like, this person's going to get blessed. We have one man here in the government in Kenya, healed of cancer, completely healed, should have been dead last year. He's walking around completely healed and whole because that same power came off of me and hit him. Amen. And I told him on the phone when I was in America, I said, just wait, I'm coming. You're not going to die. Just wait for me. And he said that publicly in a meeting that I said to him on the phone. I had forgot how I had said it. He says, wait. He said, the prophet said to me, wait for me. I'm coming. When I come, we'll be together and we'll do everything that God has ordained. Just wait for me. And when I got here and he was sitting in my, sitting in my, I, I call affectionately my, my mobile office, uh, at this really luxury vehicle. We just, uh, I've customized it so it's comfortable. And I just use that as my office on wheels, you know. And he came and sat inside. And the power of God, same thing I saw in America. Boom! Hit him just like that. Absolutely amazing. And I knew that it was done. Not only is he healed, but the destiny that he has in this life is going to be fulfilled. And the Lord said to me, tell him, you will live long, and I will show you my salvation. You know Psalm 91, 16. He said, you shall have, with long life, I shall satisfy you and show you my salvation. Why? Because he's just a regular guy? No, not at all. He helped me with some things along the way. If I were to tell you the details, oh my, he helped. Not just for a week or two, but for several years. Praise the Lord. Amen. It wasn't just like, you know, a convenient afternoon, I just did something for, for somebody else. It was an ongoing process that went into like several years. Hello? <laughs> and you wonder why God would do that. 
Lift your hands and pray for yourself right now. I pray for everybody watching right now that this will happen for you. Oh, my. It'll happen for you. It'll happen for you. It'll happen for you like it's happened for others. I, I know this man in Copenhagen, Denmark. He flew to London to see me, and the Lord touched him so powerfully. And he took me to Harrods and bought me a gold Gucci watch, and he bought me the latest smartphone at the Sony shop, uh, uh, Sony Ericsson shop uh, back at that time. The, the newest one, the smartphones just came out. He says, I want to buy you one. I was crying. I was like, I really want one, but I, you don't have to do that. I told him, no, 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 no. He says, do you have this? Would you like this? I said, I'm okay. I'm okay. I have a phone. I told him, I'm okay. I really did. He's like, no, I feel like I want to buy this for you. I started crying. I thought, my God, all the accessories, all the microphones, all the attachments. Then he said, I think you need some computers for your ministry. Yes? I said, oh, God, do we ever. And he bought me two of the top PCs and two of the top laptops in the world at the time, fully loaded, highest tech, most expensive. Had them, he ordered them from the factory and had them shipped to my office in London. And then he gave, and he, I'm not done, then he gave a large, a large offering. Then we were in another, uh, the city where he's from, and in that meeting he gave a large, a huge offering to the church, which they then in turn tithed off of that to me. So it all was like that. Did this guy just do nothing? Then he's looking for a house, and he says, uh, the economy's a little bit tight, meaning his pocket. He said, prophet, should I do it? Should I push myself? I said, give me some time to pray. I'll call you back. I don't want to just speak, you know, off the top of my head. Or if I think I feel something. Give me a minute to hear from him. Give me a, few, a little while to hear from God. I hung up the phone. It wasn't about two minutes. Two minutes. The Lord shouted loud. Tell him to do it. I'm in it. He bought this property for $3.6 million. Dollars. U.S. dollars. In their currency. He bought a property next to the royal family's house. Next to the palace where the royal family in the country lives have horses, acreage, they, him and his daughter, they love horses. They had horses and equestrian farm and all that, barns and all that for the horses. And animals there, $3.6 million. He's in the IT, he's in the uh, information technology business, has his own company. He scraped together enough money to put that deal together, bought the house, was really sweating, you know, really shaking. He was calling me to tell me. And about 10 months later, 9, 10 months later, he called me and said, Prophet, I just felt like, doctor, I just felt like I wanted to see what this property is worth. I just think, I think I want to do like some appraisal or something. Just, I'm just curious. I don't know why. I just keep, I wake up in the morning. I think about it at night. It just is like it's haunting. This thought is haunting. It's, it's coming to me. It's disturbing me. I said, just do it. Find all the people. Find the real estate people and also find the uh, land appraisers and all the government, you know, the, whatever the officials. And they came up with the figure that said, today, less than a year later, the property would, is valued and would sell for $7.2 million. In less than one year, the property doubled. So it was a distress sale. It was something he had to make happen quick. Somebody wanted out. And it was his blessing from heaven ordained because what he did. Lift your hands. That, that is not a coincidence. That was not him just being in a, in a coincidental place by accident. It was, a, it was an ordained harvest from, from Jehovah himself. Somebody that helped me, they didn't even do too much. They just were loyal to me, very loyal to me. In Nairobi, Kenya. They were just loyal. They were just loyal. They were loyal. They were loyal to me. They weren't going to do anything funny behind my back. They weren't going to, like, you know, betray me in it along the way. Hello. 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 Ding dong. Ring the bell. Ding, 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 ding. And they got scooped up by some guy that, and brought and lives in a palatial mansion now in the mountains in Europe. Someone lift your hand. With a sports car. This person was from the village in Eldoret. Their own mother read this book here, The Laws of Success. And they asked the daughter for the book. And the son, the brother was also doing something for us. He helped me print some of my prophecy books over Kenya. 
He's a young kid, 18 years old. He didn't do much. It's just that his heart was so pure and he really went out of his way. You know what I mean? At the time, he used to go get me takeout food, you know, and he would help run the printer and fix the printer and all that. I thought, boy, if that's all you, could, if that's all you have to do to get blessed, it's, pretty, it's a pretty easy road. It's not that like God is demanding, you know, you give your blood. <laughs> hello, you give organs of your body. You know, hello. 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 Or you walk across Africa and hope the lions don't get you before you get to the other side. You know, he didn't ask you to do anything like that. And the kid became the number one uh, uh, filmmaker in, in Kenya. A documentary that he did about something became number one, and it got covered by all the channels for free. Now I'm praying for him again because I think he needs some direction. He's a young kid, you know, he needs to know what to do in his life. But he got blessed like that. <clears throat> and the mother said after reading this, she felt so convicted that she said, I can't live in this village anymore. I have to go into the town and get a nice house. And she did. She's living in a big, beautiful house now in town, out of the village, in the major part of the city there. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. I mean, God can just get, and, and all the things that she needed just came supernaturally. And the daughter is living in a, in, a, in a massive property in Europe. It's amazing. Beautiful kids, sends pictures of the kids all the time. They're so precious. In fact, the baby was so anointed, came out of the womb. The baby was 14 weeks old. That's 90 days old. Less than 100 days, the baby started singing hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Couldn't even talk, never said mama, never put her feet on the ground, could walk. The baby was like less than three months old. Three months. 14 weeks. 90 days, 90 days old. A baby that's 90 days old, they're like this little thing. They just, ah, they cry, they shake, they can't walk, they can't talk, they can't do anything. And I had the video, we had the video somewhere. And their baby goes, hallelujah, put your hand like that. I'm telling you, we have the video. And then she did this like she's grabbing a mic, 90 days old. Like she grabbed the mic and she went like this with the mic, like this with her hand, like she's singing with a microphone. Can you imagine that? And said hallelujah. That was the first word out of the baby's mouth. Does it pay to serve God? Does it pay to be connected with anointing? Oh my God, you have no idea. Woo! Jesus, Jesus. There's another lady. Was in the, the ghetto, you'd say. Eastland. Somebody knows Eastland. Didn't even have a 1,000 shilling note to their name. Ripped up clothes, old clothes, nothing. Came to work just like uh, some, some, some small job in the ministry. It was loyal to me, loyal. Didn't steal. Told me about ones that did. Hello. Went out of their way to try to help. Again, wasn't perfect. It, it, it's not like they turned the world upside down. Today they're running three multi-million companies. Lift your hands. And they don't look like that anymore. They don't look like that anymore. Now they got beautiful clothes, hair done, makeup, nails, shoes, shops, offices. Oh, yeah. And because their loyalty, somebody, somebody from Asia gave them, a, a Chinese person, gave them a company, gave it to them half their company because they have a loyal attitude. Integrity is moral highness, moral uprightness, character, good character, like you've decided you're not going to cheat, steal, lie, and do all these evil things. And the Lord will bless. But by the grace of the anointing that's upon us, the Lord told me to tell people, 
they're going to get rich. I'm going to hear testimonies from all over the planet. You just better remember to send the tithes right here. Find me. Because Deuteronomy 8, I'll give you another principle. The, the scripture says, don't forget the source. Remember the source. Don't think when you get all these great things that it was you yourself. There was a source to it. Of course the source is God. But where is God's tithe account? When you have to tithe off of the proceeds of your money that you're making, what, which account, which bank is it? No, it's, there's a bank account on earth. Hello. There's an m -Pesa number. <laughs> there's a man of God that's carrying this. That's the source factory. You know, Malachi 3 says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. The storehouse is the ministry. It's the vessel that's carrying this. So you get as blessed as you can. I want to hear about it and then just remember. Remember. We have people all over the world that are getting touched now. And the Lord told me to say this today. Lift your hands. Let's pray. I, I'm not going to be long in this message, but I, I, I want to say it. I want to say it clearly and correctly. The wealth of nations is laid up for the righteous. The wealth of the wicked, Proverbs 13, 22, is laid up for the righteous. Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord makes us rich and adds no sorrow or trouble with it. Oh, yeah. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way you should go. <sighs> Isaiah 45, 2 and 3 talks about uh, the treasures of hidden places, dark places, different places that will come to you because of the touch of God. There's another scripture that says, I'll bless you, and then by this you'll know that I am the Lord your God. By this sign and wonder. People, want, people talk about miracles and signs and wonders and all that. Hello? Hello? This is a sign and a wonder when God begins to make you wealthy. I, I want to focus on that. It's like my favorite thing to hear about. Hello. Success. I love to teach on it. It's in my blood. This mantle's upon me. You want to be successful and wealthy, you're in the right, you're in the right house. Other people, I don't know what all they're talking about. I have friends, I even have a friend who's a rich man. And when he's preaching, I don't know what he's talking about. I'll be honest with you. I, I'm not going to that church. I, bless his heart. He's my friend. I respect him so greatly. I, I want to know about his admin policies, how, how he runs his company, because he's a brilliant man. He's very, very wealthy in business. Extraordinarily rich. I mean, multi-billionaire. Yeah. Yeah. And he's a pastor. He's preaching. I don't know what he's talking about. All this ethereal, you know, emotional kind of, I'm like, dude, why don't you just stand up and give me lessons and messages on how you prospered in business? I'd be, I'd be on the front row. I'd come early. I'd even pay an entrance fee. Will you teach me that? Oh, but he doesn't do it. Everything about all this, you know, you know, you know, preachers, how they preach with all these swelling words, all these, you know, emotional sayings and things they say, and you're like, what? What are you talking about? What am I supposed to do with that in my daily life? Can I wake up and do something with that? My God. What a sin it is. It's a sin before God that people would have to go to the secular world to learn about business. Oh, lift your hands. I want to prophesy there's a day coming when anointed Holy Ghost filled vessel. Somebody's going to shout right now in internet land or wherever you are, what nation or city. You're going to shout right now because you're catching what I'm saying. That Holy Ghost filled people can teach the laws of success, the laws of seed time and harvest, the laws of even administration. And marketing and development and product sales and entrepreneurship. Yes, Lord. Doesn't have to come from the world. God's the one that made it first. Why are we last? Isn't it sad that a church-going nation like Kenya, 
Hello. People are so poor and so much in struggle, but they go to church. Which church? Learning what? Let's pray. <laughs> I mean, she said it's coming to an end. Well, maybe it doesn't have to for them, but people need to find their, play, their way to the, right, to the right voice, to the right pastor. Another thing I want to say, I, I, love, I want to play this clip when we can do it sometime soon, about Reinhard Bonnke saying, you know, we, you don't want to be with a pastor that's not going anywhere. You don't want to be with someone that's not successful. You don't want to be with someone that's not hearing from God, you know. He said, you don't want to drive up behind a parked vehicle and get stuck behind it. You want to drive fast. That's what he wanted to do. And the people that he asked advice from as a young man said, slow down. Just wait. Wait for what? He didn't wait. That's why like nearly 80 million people filled out decision cards saying they're born again because of his ministry. What a powerful man. And any time he would stand up to speak, you can get blessed by listening to the voice. I mean, the minute he gets the microphone, it doesn't even take 60 seconds. He's already saying something that, boom, you feel this passion and this fire. And look at the results he produced. Hello. So you think, like, it's just okay for him. We could just watch him, and he, he's a, he has an evangelist, or, or this person in business that's doing well in business, and say, well, you know, look at how they're doing. When God really wants it to be you. Lift your hands. I'm praying for you. God wants it to be you. He wants it to be you in the game, on the playing field, not parked on the bench, not stuck in park with the emergency brake on, but driving fast, full acceleration. Every day is another oasis of glory. Every day you live is another day of progress. God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Every day. Every hour you live, something is getting achieved. Amen. We need to see people like that. We need to see people like that. Operational. Operational. The day has to end when you're watching the news all the time and seeing the, what you'd call the successful people, but, you, but you're not in the newscast. You need to be the one being spoken about in the news. Hallelujah. I don't mean literally if you don't, you know, if you don't need that. Do it privately. But, you, but your life has to be moving in succession of something. You know, people that, people that come to connect with me, the, the Lord touches their mind and they get like woken up. Something happens to them. They get switched on to another level of glory. And they even learn other skills. I'm into that. People can learn to be skilled in certain things that are valuable. We weren't here just here to waste time. Pray the Holy Ghost right now. Cabo, Ranti, Shala, Paya, Fusa, Kando, Mansala, Sheto. By the way, praying, I want to talk about the seed for a minute. The seed will produce when you sow it. Seed is sowing something you've been given by God to create something that you've been promised by him. It's the action you take. Now, it's also in your work life. It's also in your financial life. What you sow in money, what you sow in service, what you sow in work, what you sow in diligence, God counts it as a seed. The definition of a seed. A seed is anything that blesses somebody, anything that will bless somebody, anything that you have that when you give it, it'll bless somebody else. It'll help somebody else. It'll enrich somebody else. It'll empower somebody else. It'll cause something good to happen. That God counts it as a seed. And Ephesians 6, 8 says, whatever thing you do that's good, I will also then come and do it back for you. But God doesn't give it back to you the way you gave it. He gives it back multiplied. <laughs> are you learning anything here? I know you are. You're a collection of seeds. You're a walking collection of seeds. Someone, someone near you is the soil qualified to receive your seed. A seed of nothing always schedules a season of nothing. That's why you, need, you want something, you gotta be doing something. A great seed will always produce a great car harvest. The seed that you give doesn't leave you really. It goes into an account and produces for you in your future days. 
It's like it's an investment that produces something. When you give something, you're causing a transaction between yourself and God. It's not, you know, it's not, uh, it's not, you're not losing it. You're not like giving it away and then you don't see it again. You're going to see it again in the multiplied harvest because God will count it as a seed. Wow, this is powerful. Every seed contains an invisible instruction. Do you know the seed that produces uh, plants, flowers, fruits, vegetables, trees? Hello? Anything that grows? The seed had an invisible instruction in it from the boss to open up and produce new life. Wow. The seed didn't vote on that. The seed didn't say yes or no. The seed had it in it. And someone said, can money be a seed? Absolutely. Money is just paper. It's currency. It's a denomination, you know? Not a demonation like some churches. I couldn't resist. First of all, denomination, demonation, divination. I don't know what you mean. First of all, I'm just joking around. You'll get that later. It's a denomination. That, that is if the church is funny. You know, you know, funny churches. Praise the Lord. Come on now. Come on now. Let's have some fun. Yeah, I'm not talking about good people. I'm talking about those, those kind of other ones who are corrupt and starchy and dead spiritually. We don't want that. And too many people are in those kind of places. They need to come out. You never hear a message like this preached in the pulpits everywhere, do you? Do you? Even in your city here. You hear a message like this anywhere. Where? I'd like to go and say, boy, that's one of my Holy Ghost cousins. Let's connect. Maybe we'd be like, you know, Mary and Elizabeth, you know? John the Baptist in one womb, Jesus in the other, and they bump their bellies together. You know, like the fat sumo wrestlers in Japan. They bump their bellies together, and then they fight, you know? Mary and Elizabeth, maybe they said, hey, instead of doing this, you know, shake my hand. And, or going like this, or doing this, the, 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 you know, the power move. I like to do that to people. Hey, you want to shake my hand? I go like this. I like doing that. Boom, power. Have your fist clenched. Do like that. Maybe they went like this. Boop. They hit each other and said, hey. And the babies, man, the power of God, the power of God hit John the Baptist in the womb. He was filled with the Holy Ghost in the mother's womb. Imagine that. So they had something in common. They both had supernatural, glorious power in the wombs. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. Now, now I'm going to say something a bit deep now. You, you think that just was Mary that Gabriel the angel spoke to, and thou shalt have a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. You know, God with us, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father, you know. And she'll save people from their sins and cause a new generation. Meaning, talking about Jesus. Or John the Baptist, who was the prophet. But guess what? Say what? You have greatness inside of you from God. Because Jesus also lives in you. Jesus said, of man born of woman, there was not one greater than John the Baptist. But he lost his head. He couldn't live to the next day. He had to depart. And he said, I must decrease that he will increase. So the great one who was the prophet pointed to the master. And when he met him, when Jesus came to the river Jordan, he said, are you the one we've been waiting for? Jesus said, uh-huh. It's true. It's me, funny enough. Here I am. I'm here now. The Messiah has come. And, you know, people ridiculed him and called him crazy, right? But he was still the one. Guess what? The power of God is still in you, and you're the one. Lift your hands and pray. I mean, if I was, I, I'm getting excited up on this side of the desk up here, the pulpit, whatever you want to call it, the podium. But I, I feel, I feel this thing. Jesus, it was all symbolic. Yes, he came as a man. Yes, he walked on the earth. Yes, he carried it out. Yes, he was crucified. Yes, he rose again. But for what purpose? So that then he could give us, and he breathed upon the disciples and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. To do what? To go through miracles and signs and wonders, to evangelize, to bring the world, to bring the advancement of the kingdom. 
But guess who it is for now? It's for you. I've done my work here to preach this. This is powerful. I feel so fulfilled and thrilled that God would make me the voice to speak this because you got to catch this. He's alive in you. Don't ever again in your life listen to some foolish person who wants to tell you you can't or it's not you or what. Try to put you down. You are the giant. You're the Abraham, the David, the Solomon, the, one of the disciples of the apostles, the prophets. You, the entrepreneur, the business person, the Lydia of Thyatira, the, the, the Joanna and Susanna who ministered to Jesus because of their great wealth. It's you that has the same opportunity and potential to have all of that that they had. Beloved, I wish, pray, and desire above everything else that you prosper. And he said to the well-beloved guys, because John was talking to a man, because John saw this man Gaius in front of him, because he had a revelation to speak, but it was not just for the Gaius man. It was for you. So years ago in my Bible, I did this more than 30 years ago, imagine. And I wrote in my Bible, probably more than, probably 30, almost 33 years ago. I wrote, because I got this revelation early on. And I, I've seen God, there's no, I, I was an executive in New York before I went into the ministry. I was well paid. I had businesses also. I had all that. I saw a homeless person. I used to take $100 bills out of my pocket and give them. I found that after a while they didn't get off the street because they're crazy in their head. I come back later and see them. I thought they'd go get, get on with their life, but they didn't. So I was very kind of disappointed about that. I said, these people have real problems. I don't know who can get them delivered. That's another message. But I used to have so much stacks of cash in my, and I'd give, you know. But after I met Jesus, oh my God, he made me rich. Lift your hands. No apology for that. I've made more money. I had one time I wasn't preaching for a while. Something was going on. And I, had, I, I accounted the money that came to me during the time when I was out of the, off the microphone. The microphone was off. I dropped the mic one day. I did a mic drop. I didn't come back for a little while. Amen? Some things were going on. And uh, I saw the money that people sent me was more, come on now, was actually more privately than ever came in in the big meetings with thousands of people. I don't understand how that happened. Just the covenant of God. When you're with him, he'll make you rich. But I got this revelation. You have to have a revelation of it. And I got it early on, so I, I didn't cross out Gaius because the Bible says clearly, don't take away or add to the book. Don't ever cross out a word in the Bible. Oh, I think that's dangerous. Just put, I just, I took it, I put a little, you know, those little uh, upward, uh, arrows, you know, and I wrote Thomas. So I, I went in between beloved Gaius, I drew a little line there, and I drew up, and I wrote Thomas on top of that. I kept that in my Bible. To the well beloved Thomas, who I love in the truth, and he said in the fourth verse, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. And Jesus even said in John 8, 32, he said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, make you something you weren't before. It can't be unmade once it's made. <sighs> Who I, he says, I have no greater joy than to hear my children walk in the truth, and the truth is what? The truth is what? The truth is what? The truth is what? That I want you to prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. I want you to be rich in this world, not poor. I want you to be healed and healthy, not sick and weak. When you find yourself sick and weak, it's a few things you need to do, and I want to give you this, a formula. You need to analyze your environment and go to God and say, God, have I obeyed you fully? Doesn't mean that sickness is demonic. It can attack people. It attacks people. Doesn't mean that you're evil because, because sickness came against anybody. Doesn't mean that you're wrong. You understand? I have to say that really clearly. But 
If you're feeling weak, according to the scripture, now I like to take it from the Bible. Do you understand? I'm not just saying philosophies here or what I'm thinking about or what somebody told me or what I heard or what I thought. No, not my opinion. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, where's that, that whole discourse about communion? He said, many are weak and sickly among you because they've not discerned the Lord's body. In other words, you're not exactly where you're supposed to be. Because I'm a witness. When God uproots you and stirs you up and gets you to the place called there, where you're functioning there, strength and energy comes. I, one thing I marveled about when I came back to Africa, I had energy every morning. I woke up in the morning full of power, full of, it's like lightning was moving through me, electric current. I felt, oh! And there was a place I was uh, for a while that I didn't feel that. So you have to discern the Lord's body. In other words, you have to be doing your assignment. Hello? This is a good balance to all of this. It's not just for nothing. You have to be in the flow of the mission of God, and he'll bless you there. That's where you get blessed. That's how it happens. So if you ever find yourself like feeling weak or lacking financially, messed up, you're not positioned correctly. And I pray and prophesy right now over every person under the sound of this voice of Thomas Manton IV that God has anointed and ordained to speak this. As his own oracle, I declare that you will find yourself in the place. God will break you out of every system, every evil thing, every wrong arena, every kind of problem that just is not right. The Lord will take you out of it and get you to the place he's ordained because the scripture says also in the book of Revelation, I think it's in the fourth chapter somewhere, 11, I do not remember the exact verse, maybe it's 411. It says he, well, we'll find it later. In the book of Revelation, it says, God plants those in the body such as it pleases him. You don't choose your place of destiny. He chose it. He created a place for you to be. He created a people for you to be with. He created a connection for you to be connected with. And when that happens, flourishing will come. I prophesy. And people are going to hear me. You're going to hear me. I mean, you're, you're going to figure, you're hearing me. You're going to figure this out. Say, how was I doing before now that I'm listening to this voice here? Now that I'm connected under this mantle, what's happening for me? Things are starting to evolve, emerge and happen and develop and go higher, and it wasn't like that before. And I pray, I weep in tears sometimes in intercession privately, thinking about people that are held captive in all these organizations, in all these cultural societies, in all these cultural churches, in all these culture clubs, in all these situations, and the people are just living in deadness, listening to nothing that doesn't help them achieve anything. And here we are, but God's gonna bridge that gap and bring it all together. Any venue we have now will not hold the people. Will not hold the people. We'll keep breaking loose and going to a bigger place. And I want to declare we're going to have a much bigger place, a much bigger place. It's going to, everything is going to be technically excellent. Amen. And it won't be dependent on anyone or anything. It's going to be because God afforded it to us and gave it to us. Amen. So let, 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 let's get ready. I just saw the angel of the Lord standing right here. Whew. Right here, I just saw a flash of light. He's right here. There's an angel standing right here on this carpet, right next to me, right here. Hello. Jumbo. I know angels speak Swahili. I know they do. They're heavenly creatures. They're smart. They can understand everything. Right here when I said that, boom! In other words, the angels of the Lord as a sign to me of going out to get a place for us. Amen. Property and building and land and come on. Come on, clap your hands and do it. Oh, come on, come on. Let the people out there hear you. Oh, hallelujah. All kinds of stuff. The best equipment, the best environment. I'm about to land this plane on the tarmac here in a minute, but we'll pick this up next time. But, uh, I promised to share a dream I had this week, and I just have to do it, just by integrity. I said I would, I will. 
I told you what Reinhardt said, that I wanted to play that clip about Bonky. I told you that. The songs I'll sing next time. Don't worry. I'll do it. It's just a different service. We'll do those. It's going to happen. Everything I say, we do. But I want to tell this prophetic dream I had on Wednesday or Thursday morning. Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning. I can't remember. Earlier this week about Donald Trump. Now, you know a prophetic dream when you can remember everything a week later. Hello? You know you have dreams and then they evaporate? You know, it was even a good dream, a good dream that you thought you should remember. But even an hour goes by after you wake up and you've forgotten the whole thing. Hello? You know what I mean? But when you have a dream and the, the vision, the images in the dream are alive in the spirit. You can see them even years later. That's a prophetic dream. Like the one I had about Bonky. I'm seeing it again right now in my, in my spiritual eye in front of me right now. You say you're seeing it. Yes, I am. The way he was standing. My mother was in the dream. She's in heaven already. I thought, this is not earth because my mother is not on earth. So why am I hearing her speaking in the dream? And there's Reinhard Bonke. I could see it like I just saw it, like I just saw it. And this was several months ago I had this vision. While I was sleeping. It was a dream. It wasn't, I wasn't awake. So I had this dream in the morning. And I saw President Trump. It was a very strange dream. Guess what happened in the dream? Ooh. Oh, this, I could really, if I wanted to be a marketer, I could really use this because people think it means like, oh, there's going to be war in the Middle East and Iran is going to, we're going to have to go do some stuff and they're going to do, no, no, it's not about that at all. It's personal. But w when you catch what the Lord showed me, why he gave me this dream, it's, it is absolutely amazing. It has nothing to do with his presidency. It has nothing to do with the world, the foreign policy, economy, nothing like that. Military, nothing like that. It's personal. In the dream, there was this very exquisite car. And here comes President Trump, uh, and I was his driver. I was his driver. In the dream, I was his driver. Was it in a military place? It wasn't in a... Uh, an official government vehicle, it was all personal from the business side. And I, I'm, I'm fumbling myself to think I got to get in this car and I have to drive him very well. So I did. We went somewhere. He seemed happy. He was really smooth and cool and relaxed and he was friendly and we were talking. And then we got to this place, and all of a sudden, we opened the back of the car, and there were different compartments in the back of the car. I don't know, it was like a Rolls Royce, for some, but it was longer. It was a weird, it didn't look like a car from this world. I, I can't explain it. They had all these compartments, and things were made out of the most thick, exquisite leather and gold, real gold. All of the settings on it and the edges of it, the frames of it, were solid gold. And I opened the thing, and inside there was another compartment, and I reached in there and opened another one. There was another one. I thought, hey, how am I going to get the thing he wants? And I kept looking for it. Finally, it kind of like opened it away. I was a little bit like, whoa, I have to learn to work this thing. It just kept opening different compartments inside this compartment in the back of the car. And I found the thing that he wanted, and I brought it. I thought, oh, God, Lord, Lord you've helped me. you saved me there. I, I didn't know how I was going to find this thing that he was asking for. And then we started to drive again, and all of a sudden we get to this river, and now we're in Africa. Lift your hands. Now we're in Africa. I'm like, ah! No! Please, Lord! Hallelujah. And there was this cliff that went down a hill, and everything was broken and messed up, and the bottom was these rocks and all this, and it was like water there, like it's a river. And I was like, he's looking at it like looking straight ahead, like in shock, kind of looking, you know, like. And all of a sudden, before I could, I turned this way, and before I could look again, he ran down the hill and dove into the water and started swimming with his clothes on, his suit on. And he didn't, he didn't have a formal suit and tie like he wears now. It was kind of like, you know, something like this, like a custom-made suit, you know, nice fabric, you know, like a casual kind of thing, which you, you'd never see him wearing in public. So, again, that's another sign to me that the vision, the, the whole dream was a, was a personal message to me about something, okay? And 
he began to swim in it. And I got so nervous. I thought, Lord God, what is he doing? And he swam through it, came up in the water, and he says these words. He looked up at me and he said, everything I touch changes for the better. And this will all be fixed because I was here. I lifted my hand. Come on, someone lift your hands. And this is Donald Trump, okay, who's a success in business, but I, I don't know how he's a human and you're also a human and you can't develop your walk to get somewhere. And here I am, I'm his driver. I'm standing there like, what is going on? He came up, his clothes were wet. He looked like he just went like this on his hair. He didn't even care and he just pointed at it like, this will all change. I thought, my God. So the scene changed now. He's dry, different set of clothes. We're back in the car. Now I get a little bit nervous, tiny bit, in the front of the car and I get, and then I get back out and then here comes Melania, his wife, she's walking this way and uh, she's gonna get in the back of the car. So I opened the doors for them, they could get in comfortably and we begin to drive away. And I thought, cool, mission accomplished. Now we're back in New York. <laughs> the dream changed, we're in New York and I'm driving down Fifth Avenue where his buildings are, you know, Trump Tower's down there. The Plaza Hotel is on the corner that he used to own and the other buildings, that there's another Trump uh, International down by the UN and then there's a Trump building also on the other side of the park on Central Park West. Now we're back there, I said, oh, back home, praise the Lord, everything's nice and organized. I don't know what just happened over there, but he said everything's going to change for the better that now that he was here. I thought this is great. So I'm driving down Fifth Avenue, his wife says something, she's laughing, he's happy. He put his hand, reached up, put his hand on my shoulder, and that was the end. I woke up. And I thought, what on earth did I just see? I'm sitting there awake, I'm like this. And I thought, I have to get my recorder and just speak this and to text and, and uh, document this. But I didn't have to. I don't have to read it now because it's so alive to me that everything that I saw in the dream, it's like I don't have to read it. I don't have to remember anything. It's just the memory. It's just it's in the spirit. And the Lord said to me this. He said, "What do you think your connection with Him means?" I said, "Excellent." I knew it, it without a hesitation. Excellent connection to who He is. Greatness, wealth, riches, success. Hello. Yeah. And the Lord said, "Thou hast well said, my son. That's exactly what I wanted you to see. Lift your hands." Now you're connected with me, so this is gonna happen like that. Everything needs to be like that. So I thought this has nothing to do with the state of the world or the fact that he's the president or running for re-election or being attacked by the liberal left and all the psycho fake media news and psychos in the Middle East who are screaming full of the devil. It has nothing to do with that, nothing to do with that. It's just a personal thing. And the Lord said, look at what he's achieved. Do you want to achieve like that? I said, of course I do. I, I cry in my heart every day of my life. And sometimes that's all I think about all half the day. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And he said, you're, you're there, you're going there more, and, and you're going to raise up people like that too. Lift your hands. People that are connected with this, I, the Lord spoke to me, thus saith the Lord. I'm sorry for people that didn't make it to the event today. But uh, may, maybe you'll catch this on the rebound if God would give it to you. But whatever, however, it's whatever. The people that are here and those that are watching, and get, get ready because I'm pronouncing this over you, especially the faithful ones that are connected in covenant. Like it said there in Deuteronomy 29.9, the words of the covenant, people, keep, he said, keep it. You that are in covenant, keep it that you will prosper in all that you do. This is the will of God concerning you and concerning me. That we'll prosper in all that we do. John said, beloved, I wish above all other things. Am I in the Bible? Am I in the word? Is that correct? Oh, you better believe it's correct. It's the word of God. I wish, pray, and desire above everything else that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul and mind will, intellect, emotions, brilliance of God in you get switched on, you can go to a higher level. And I thought, Lord, this is powerful, I receive it in Jesus' name. 
Then the Lord began to remind me about the technological prophet word and about the prophet to the nations thing and about all of these things and private aircraft and offices and buildings and technical things and uh, churches and branches and networks all over the world. Come on, lift your hands. The, the Lord is doing this thing here and there's something very, 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 very key about Africa in this equation. I, and I was really touched when someone asked the, uh, Reinhard Bonnke, I think it was Pat Robertson when he was interviewing, he said, so what was it about Africa? Why Africa? He said, oh, he said, and he said it, he almost had tears in his eyes. He, had, he was so full of the Holy Ghost when he said, he actually said, that's a personal thing. It's a personal thing between me and God. God told me this was my assignment. I had an assignment for this. Yeah. So when you're willing and obedient, Isaiah 119 said, you'll eat the good of the land. Let's pray. Our life is a walking factory of blessing, producing, events, happenings, things. And the Lord wants us to have it. And I pronounce upon people that the blessing of the Lord is going to make you rich with no sorrow. The wealth and treasure that he's promised is coming one way or the other or every possible way. And you're going to see the hand of God and the face of God in, in the sign and the wonder of his blessings to you that are going to be beyond what you've even asked or thought in Jesus' name. The people that I'm praying for to be successful, to become wealthy in business, the connection is producing that. And you do your part. I'm doing my part to be anointed, to live with the Lord, to walk with the Lord and be connected and I'm releasing this grace upon you all over the world. And get in touch. Let's connect together. And you can sow, you can tithe, you can do these things that I've been talking about. When you sow, give, G-I-V-E, and it shall be given. Jesus said in Luke 6.38. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give in your bosom. And the same measure that you measure out, the same measure will be measured back to you again. Seven harvests for the one act. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto you seven, seven things on the one. That's how it works. So it's a time to sow. It's a time for success. The Lord spoke about this being the season of success. The New Year word was about success. I'm making this a time of success. I'm even putting this into my people's name. You will be successful. And you will be made rich in Jesus' name. So be it. I'm Thomas Manton IV. I'll talk to you again in the next broadcast. I'm praying for you in the words of our great predecessor, the prophet Isaiah, when he said in 48, 17, I am the Lord your God, the Lord said. He teaches you to profit through the prophet, of course, <laughs> and leads you in the way that you should go. The direction of God is coming. The blessing of God is coming. The fruitfulness of your life is manifesting. The touch of God that's in you will come out through you. Like Donald Trump said to me in the dream, everything I touch and get involved with changes for the better. But this is really what God said first. It wasn't a man's thing. It was God's thing from the beginning. When he gave the promise thousands of years ago, whatever you set your hand to, it will prosper. This is the will of God for you. So let it happen for you. Let it happen for you Amen. in greater measures and manifestations from today in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you very much. I'm praying for you in Jesus' name. Looking to hear from you. Get in touch. Thank you very much for listening. I love you. I'm praying for you. The blessings of the Lord are yours and mine in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.